Hey guys and girls, as was requested in one of our comments on the YouTube videos, um, I'm going to walk through my, what I call the information digestion system. Came up with some name I think fits it. If you have any ideas, by the way, for a better name, let me know. I love naming stuff. Um, but so, so what it really comes down to is, as a second brain user, I'm assuming that you're into information organization. And as we've mentioned in some of our past videos, the amount of information that we're getting nowadays is huge. And also the way we consume our information has changed, right? So we've switched from, for example, physical books to Kindle, and we've switched from newspapers to online news and, and, and blogs and whatnot. And even podcasts uh, are, are part of this massive switch in terms of the way we consume our information. And doing this has complicated things on the one hand, but on the other hand, it has also allowed us to build a lot of interesting tools to kind of optimize this whole flow. And um, who would have guessed? This is something we're pretty into at Systematic Mastery. And uh, I've been working a little bit less aggressively the last few months, but have been working for a few months in the past on trying to optimize this system for myself. Um, I'm going to try to walk through kind of the basics and maybe in a later video we'll walk through some of the details on how I personally use it. But right now what I'm going to try and do is explain just the tools that I use and the way I use them. And you can decide for yourself whether it's something that you like. The three tools that I'm going to walk through today are Readwise, Instapaper and Memex. All three tools are part of the information digestion workflow that I have, and they also all serve a different function. The main tool that I'll be using is actually Readwise, but there's a couple of others that make it slightly simpler or more interesting. So what Readwise does is basically allow you to review a few highlights or even questions that you want to ask to yourself, similar to how other people use Anki, for example. Uh, but then it does this through a better user experience, in my personal opinion, and it also allows you to tweak quite a lot of settings. Um, overall, I've seen that Readwise is improving stuff also has qu quite a high pace, which is something that I really like to see, because I believe that we are at the beginning of what all these information organization tools allow us to do. And having a tool that is focused on developing fast is, is something that I personally buy into. Um, so let me walk you through Readwise, which is kind of the basis of my information digestion workflow, and then through Instapaper and Memex. And I'll also go a little bit into some of the ideas that I'm having. Um, I already have a tab open that I'm going to uh, show uh, that I will try to use in one of the future videos. So Readwise, let me quickly go to what Readwise is all about. So this is the homepage of Readwise. The idea is that you do a daily review. So every day you'll go through a number of highlights that you can configure yourself and you'll do nothing with them except for reading them and perhaps tagging them or maybe adding a note to them. And what this allows you to do is kind of prime yourself to, for example, that that's what I use it for at least, to prime yourself to change your mindset on certain things or to make you like repeat an insight that was really meaningful to you or some complicated detail about some esoteric thing that you've read and are interested in that you do not want to forget. Um, Readwise really allows you to tweak exactly how you use it as well. So imagine you have a situation where you're doing a lot of tests uh, for school, for example, around a particular topic, say Python programming, then you can tweak your Readwise to only show you um, highlights that are relevant to Python programming. And this will allow you to be more efficient. So let me open a daily review. This is my daily review for today, actually. So we're going to go through it together. Um, yeah, so this is actually a good example of what I just mentioned. Um, right now, I want to prime my mind on DevOps more. Uh, I've read a few books and articles and all, uh, and all that stuff on, on what DevOps is and how you can use it. And then I've been practicing it in the wild, so to say. Um, but I think it's really important to more or less change your mind if you're going into a different trajectory. Uh, so this is what I try to do here. I'll just go through them and I'll skip to maybe a more interesting one. If you're not into DevOps, I can imagine that it's kind of lame to watch me go through, I don't know, five uh, DevOps notes. 
So this is actually really interesting. This is a highlight that I haven't seen yet. So what I usually do, which is an advice I can give, is to tag every single highlight that you get the moment you read it um, so that it allows you to tweak more efficiently in the future. So I am going to tag this with programming. This is uh, something I kind of generically use for most programming books. And in some cases, I'll be a little bit more specific on an article or something like this. I think it's actually quite an interesting highlight. So um, I'd like to see this more often. And then what you can do, this is cool about Readwise, you can actually give feedback to Readwise itself to tell it how often it should resurface this particular highlight. So in this case, I think it's quite interesting. I haven't read the highlight. I don't think this is really applicable in my work. I don't do a lot of, this is kind of an optimization tip or law. I don't do a lot of active optimization in Python currently. I've done some of these things in the past, so it might be relevant for the future. But right now, I'm going to say, I want to see this someday in the future. I don't have to discard it because I definitely want to see it someday, but we'll see. All right, so next one, this is actually an example of a note. Um, so apparently while reading this, a really good book, by the way, Designing Your Life, um, while reading this, I had an idea, added it as a note from my Kindle. It's really quite neat because it automatically syncs to, uh, to Readwise. So, great note. I have design thinking as a tag. And I also have meaning as a tag, which for me kind of is a... I would say an umbrella tag for anything that allows me to either change my mindset about a particular thing or just nudge myself towards thinking in a, say, controlled way about the things that I'm doing in my life and the decision I'm making on a, on a daily or even longer basis. So this one I would actually like to see soon because this is something that's quite important to me. Another example of a readwise feature is to hide, which is called close a deletion, to hide a particular word in a highlight. Now, there's one feature I would really love to see in Readwise, and that is the ability to hide multiple words. Currently, that's not possible, but you can hide one word and thereby prime yourself to actually think about what you're reading, right? Because there's one uh, kind of obvious bottleneck here is that if you use Readwise and you just skip through them fast, then there's not a lot you're going to learn. So the trick is to try and consciously take a moment to ingest the highlight and then go to the next one. Feedback is a really good way also to nudge yourself to think about it before you actually click on the next button. So in this case, what I think this is, because I've seen it before, is actually I kind of know it's assumptions. So great negotiators are able to question the assumptions that the rest of the involved players accept on faith or in arrogance. In this case, I'm right. Great. So I'll do it someday, which is still, uh, this is the feedback I gave it last time. Now, another example of closed deletion. Finally, there's the category that researchers call performance control. Okay, so we're going to the next one. This is another cool feature. This is actually a really good uh, daily Readwise because it uh, showcases all the features that Readwise has. So this is a different one. Um, this is where you can ask yourself a question and write down the answer and then in the future go through the question again and check if you actually know the answer. So let's see. The, DIP's formal definition, high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. Abstractions should not depend on details. Instead, details should depend on abstractions. I think I can use another uh, reiteration of this. And this is another cool feature. So as you can see, I do nine highlights every day. Um, and this book I've read, so I don't know why Readwise does this, but what's really cool is that based on my highlights, it actually makes recommendations to books that I like. And it, it actually works. I've chosen three or four books over the last few months uh, that I decided to read because Readwise recommended them. Um, so it, it's really quite great. The Practicing Mind, by the way, is also a recommended book. I already hearted this one. So you can actually um, kind of benefit from other people's work on, uh, on the highlights that they make, which I think is qu quite amazing. And that is today. And now I have a streak of 61 days. Um, and this is this is really neat. This is my best streak so far, by the way. I'm really happy about it. Um, so what you can see is it actually keeps track of how well you're doing. Um, I started off pretty well, but I think I got better over time. I had a few weak spots here and there where I didn't do it for a few days. What's interesting is that it's actually fun enough. Um, so now I'm really on a pretty hard streak, which is great. Um, and I'm seeing that I'm under number 1,000 in the ranks. That's also fun. 
So this is basically the main function of Readwise, but there's more, right? So as, as I said, um, you can also tweak your daily review. Um, so let's close this and this and go to the configuration. So the cool thing here is that in my case, for example, I am pretty interested in DevOps right now. So what I've done is I've actually looked at document tags. And in this case, you can see that programming is really high for me. Mathematics is really high for me. Domain-driven design is something technical. Uh, DevOps, cryptography. So those are all particular things that I want to have more uh, highlights of resurface right now. Um, of course, you can also be more specific with these things. So if there's any particular maybe supplemental book, which is one of the books that they um, basically recommend to you, uh, but they can also be books that you've read that Readwise knows about, um, that it will then show highlights of that other people actually made, right? Because if you go through an audiobook, you've actually consumed the book, but you don't have any notes on it. So this is what Readwise allows you to do then using other people's highlights that have actually read the book, which I think is an amazing feature. For example, Willpower, I actually did read, but I didn't add all my highlights to Readwise um, because I added my notes in my second brain in Obsidian because I read the book in physical form and then I highlight using a pen. Um, I, I'm just not so fond of then putting all those highlights in Readwise, so I decided to basically make a kind of condensed note of the whole book of Willpower in my second brain, but I would still like to resurface some of the highlights. So this is one of the use cases that I imagine could be useful for others as well. Um, so yeah, you can go through this as well and just kind of figure out what is important for you and then make sure that you get more of those highlights. Definitely worth uh, checking out. And then there's one other cool thing I would like to show you, and that is the ability to import. So as you know, I just said it can actually import from Kindle, but that's not it. It can import from a lot of tools. Um, there's also new stuff being added, so I try to keep an eye on this and use whatever they're adding. For example, I didn't know about Ino Reader yet, so it's something I, I'm totally willing to see if it's worth for me. Command is a really cool one. Uh, it's a browser that you can use, and you can actually highlight from the browser itself. Definitely worth checking out Command Browser. I think it's only iOS so far, but pretty cool stuff. Um, you can import PDFs as well. It's a little bit more painful because you have to actually import the file itself. So it's not super optimal, but it's okay. Um, the things I use the most are Kindle, Instapaper, and Goodreads, and Apple Books. Um, I used Air as well. I'm actually uh, gonna attempt to go back to it, but I didn't really like the user experience of Air so much. I think they had a few quirks in the product that they still needed to work out. This was a few months ago, um, but I'm definitely happy to give it a chance because what Air actually allows you to do is it transcribes podcasts and it allows you to highlight particular parts of the podcast, which is extremely useful if you listen to a lot of podcasts, which is something that uh, I do. And I hope you do as well because it's really quite fun sometimes. Um, yeah, and there's also Twitter. Uh, I don't use it that often because I'm not that much on Twitter because I believe that my attention is wasted on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's nice. And then you see a tweet or some friend sends a tweet and then I'll uh, po post a comment in the tweet uh, at Readwise, which is a Twitter account, and then save. And then Readwise knows about this after you've linked it to your Readwise, and then we'll save this tweet, which is really also quite great. So now uh, I'm going to show you how the Kindle stuff works. So I have Kindle. And in this case, this is a book that I'm reading right now. Um, it's called Artificial Intelligence and Finance. Pretty cool book. It's a little bit heavy on, uh, on the math for me. Uh, but actually still quite fun, but it's uh, it's just slower to read. So in this case, I highlighted a part here, which allows me to nudge myself in the future on the difference between a normative theory and a positive theory. And this is a really good example of how you can use Readwise while you're easy reading through Kindle. Now, there's also the ability to export from uh, Apple Books. Um, I tend to use Apple Books mostly for PDFs um, because you can't really use Kindle for that. Uh, so then it doesn't really work. You still have to import your PDF. So if you're uh, fond of reading from PDFs, it's something I recommend uh, doing, but it might be slightly more difficult to get your uh, notes into Readwise. There's a few other options. So you can also export your notes from uh, from Apple Books just by, so by the sidebar, which is certainly more user-friendly. Then another cool tool that I want to show you is Instapaper. Um, I'm going to show you a good example. So All right, so this is Instapaper. And I've already opened it. I put us on productivity, which I think is relevant to this podcast. There's some other topics that I save articles for, but I think it's more fun to, to do this. Um, and what Instapaper allows you to do is while you're browsing the web, you'll read articles and whatnot. 
And there are quite some parts of those articles that you also want to have in Readwise, right? Or you want to at least resurface parts of those articles because you want to remember them. Now, in the past, you could take a manual note. Um, but yeah, we're too lazy for that. At least I know I am too lazy for that. So definitely not going to do that. Uh, so then you can use automation for this. And the cool thing about Instapaper is that you can put any article uh, from the internet in Instapaper extremely simply and then make uh, notes or highlights uh, on that article. So um, there is a Chrome app. Um, you can use it to save a particular article. So for example, here, this is a post from, um, who is it again? I think, oh yeah, it's actually in the website name, Paul Graham. Uh, thank you, Zoe. So. Paul Graham uh, wrote a blog post about maker schedule versus manager schedule, which is extremely relevant in my line of work. Um, as an engineer, I work with engineers and I work with managers. Uh, and I think it's really important for people to understand the difference between someone that needs to be in deep work and flow. So basically no distractions, which is definitely the side that I'm on, um, or someone that has a lot of meetings and needs to communicate a lot with people, which is extremely important work. However, the amount of focus that you need, or at least long periods of focus, generally is slightly less to be productive. And the overall uh, effectiveness of a manager, I think, is heavily influenced by how far they can understand the importance of a maker schedule for the makers that they have to manage. Uh, but also vice versa. Someone that has a maker schedule ideally understands the importance, but also structure of a manager schedule. Now, this post kind of goes into that. And let's put this in Instapaper. Saving, still saving. I don't think it's gonna save. I'm assuming it's saved. Okay, it's not gonna save. Okay, so let's go back to Instapaper. Um, and in this case, let's just assume everything went well because I actually already had the article in there. It could have something to do with the fact that it didn't save. All right, so this is the article. Uh, I read it and I liked it and I made some notes. So Instapaper, allows you to make these notes in Instapaper itself. So you can open Instapaper at any time. So Instapaper has an app, there's an iOS app and there's an Android app, you can use them. And there you can read all the articles that you have saved into Instapaper. You can also save articles from your uh, browser in iOS, for example. So you'll just have to share it with the Instapaper app and it will be added just like any other web page. Um, so the cool thing is you'll have a collection of art articles that you find interesting. Um, whenever you're bored or you feel like reading something, I don't know, maybe you're in public transport, you can open Instapaper and you can spend your attention on something that you find interesting because you've already prepared for this moment in the past. Now I made a few highlights of this and this is something every now and then I'll see inside of Readwise and that's because these two are linked because you can, as you remember, I have a synchronization set up. So that's Instapaper. Um, by the way, there's also one other option I didn't actually show you, and that is the ability to make a note. So you can highlight, but you can also make a note. Um, and this will also be synced to Readwise. Now, the third tool I would like to go through is Memex. So one of the reasons I really uh, love Memex is it's different from Instapaper in that you don't have to save the whole article. So you can actually save a part of an article that you get online instead of first importing the whole article. And you can imagine that it might not be that useful for some people, but for me, it's extremely useful. So that's why I added this to, uh, to the walkthrough. For example, if you have Slack open and you wanna highlight something, if you have it open in your browser, you can actually highlight directly uh, the Slack piece into your Readwise. And this is pretty epic and you can't really import private websites uh, directly into Instapaper in that sense. Um, so that's one of the things that I use uh, Memex for. So for example, in this case, I just put up a random Stack Overflow question and I'll highlight this because I think it's really, really interesting. And I highlighted it like this and there you go. All right, so in here I can add a comment or I can add a tag. And as you can see, I added quite some tags here as well. And those are all synced back into Readwise. Um, so what this allows you to do as well is go through all the articles that you have highlighted and it will still allow you to just go back to the article or page or whatever um, and just show you whatever you've uh, highlighted. And you can also actually install an app on your phone uh, and do the same thing from your phone. It's not something that I actively do. Um, it's actually quite similar to the feature uh, that I just spoke about, which is command. This browser does something very similar to Memex. I decided to uninstall command um, because I didn't like the user experience as much. Um, I personally also have a few concerns about the security uh, of a product like this and I check their privacy policy and being relatively privacy minded, I prefer not to uh, use a browser um, developed by a company that does not have a full privacy policy. But the user experience overall of this product was actually really quite good and I think it has a 
load of potential. So I would love to try it out again in the future. And I think it's an awesome idea. So to the developers of Command, if they ever see this, uh, please keep going because it's a really, really awesome idea to have a browser to actually highlight whatever you browse. Uh, for now, I'm going to stick to to Memex World Brain, uh, and I'm really happy with this. All right, guys. So this was the basic workflow that I use for information digestion. Um, yeah, so I really hope that this was a useful video for you. Uh, if you have any ideas or comments or questions or something that I maybe missed, um, just let us know in the comments. And for now, thank you. And I hope to talk to you in the future.